Praise the Lord, everyone. So good to be in the house of God today. It's, so, it's an honor to be here. It was David that wrote in the Bible. He said, I'd rather be in the house of God one time than to be anywhere 10,000 times. And I feel the same way today. I feel like being in the house of God is, is better than to be anywhere else. Because in the house of God is where miracles can happen. In the house of God is where you can get delivered. In the house of God is where something great can happen that will forever change your life. And it's an honor to be here today. Before I get to anywhere, I want to give honor to my father for giving me this opportunity. I give honor to Pastor Silas for allowing me to speak to you or to this great evening. I give honor to my mom, my family, a great family. I love them. They have taught me so much. And to this day, I am a product of what they have done in my life. Uh, I want to give everybody that's here today, good to see everyone. And for those that will be watching online on Quiz at Yesterday TV, we welcome you too. Uh, it's so good to be here. But before I get to the Word of God, I wonder if wherever you are, if you will pray with me that God will have His way. Lord Jesus, we love you. Lord, we thank you for this great opportunity that you have given us to be in your house. God, I pray that you would anoint me, God, to preach this Word as you want me to preach it, God. God, I pray that you will help any, everyone that's listening, God, that they can accept who you are and get to know you on a deeper level. God, I pray that you would help us to learn something today, help us to get to know you. And I pray all of this in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to try not to keep you guys for so long. But if you have your Bibles, we're going to turn to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 9, and we're going to start from verse number 6. Isaiah 9 and 6, I will be reading from the King James Version in my Bible. And whatever Bible you have, let's, let's go to the book of Isaiah 9 and 6. The Bible says, reading from the King James Version, the Bible says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Uh, from this scripture, I want to preach on this, or I want to speak to you all on a subject called, There is Power in His Name. There is Power in His Name. When, when the prophet Isaiah was writing into this uh, book of Isaiah 9 and 6, he, he, he felt as something, he felt a prophetic word come out to him. You have to understand that prophet Isaiah was a prophet in the Old Testament. Now when Jesus was born, Jesus was born in the New Testament. We find, we find Jesus, or we are, we are introduced to Jesus in the book of Matthew for, for a child is born, his name could be Emmanuel, which means God with us. But in the Old Testament, we find prophet Isaiah, he gets to prophesy, he gets to, he felt something, he, he, he felt something in his spirit to prophesy to everyone that was there and he said I, I feel there's a child that is born and when he said for a child is born he said it like he was born there at that moment and he goes on to give him a name the Bible says that he said and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful uh, wonderful counselor the mighty God the everlasting father and the prince of peace and he was prophesying of who Jesus was going to be. Today, if you haven't heard or been taught, I want us to just dig a little bit deeper of who Jesus was and who Jesus is. See, first of all, we have to understand that Jesus is the same. The Bible let us know in Hebrews 13 and 8 will be our main scripture. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Which lets me know that Jesus is the same. He doesn't change. Everything that is in Jesus does not change. What you have to understand that has might change, the car that you drive today might change, the clothes that you're wearing today, tomorrow is going to change. But the Bible let us know that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus does not change. Everything in Jesus will always remain the same. When we not leave this earth, when, when, when I don't live here no more, Jesus will be the same. When you are not here no more, Jesus will remain the same. That all the power and the authority that Jesus has, there's not going to be a day that his power becomes less. There's not going to be a point that when Jesus loses power, but the Bible says that Jesus is the same 
yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. See, because a lot of people believe that Jesus changed. A lot of people believe that the same God in the Old Testament, that is not the same God in the New Testament. And they try to twist up who God was. But Jesus was prophesied in the Old Testament when, when, when Prophet Isaiah said that the, our child is born and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. So Jesus was prophesied in the Old Testament. The New Testament is about Jesus. The Old Testament is about Jesus. Matter of fact, this Holy Word of God, this Bible that we read every day is Jesus. This book was written because of Jesus, because Jesus does not change. He is the same today, today, and forever. He does not change. The New Testament is about Jesus. The whole Bible was about Jesus. And scriptures on, on, on why the whole Bible is about Jesus, we will find a great verse in, in the book of John, John 5 and 46. Jesus, Jesus said this. He, he is in red letters. It's in your Bible. John 5 and 46. The Bible says, Jesus said, For had ye believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. See, Jesus was speaking in this scripture, and Jesus was telling his disciples and everyone that was gathered that day that if you believed Moses, if you believed the Ten, Command the Ten Commandments and the teaching of Moses and who Moses was and the way Moses was teaching his people, Jesus was saying that if you believe Moses, then you have, then you have to believe me because everything that Moses was writing, it was because of me. So Jesus was saying that when Moses wrote up the Ten Commandments on the stone and Moses was teaching teaching and leading the people out of bondage and, and Jesus was saying in the New Testament that if you believe Moses and what Moses did and, and who Moses was then you have to believe me because everything that Moses was writing it was because of me it was because of Jesus that Moses did what he did so Jesus said if you believe Moses then you have to believe me because he wrote of me he was writing about me he was saying that it was me it was me it was me See, that's why Jesus said that I did not come to destroy the commandments, but Jesus said, I come to fulfill the commandments. See, because when you believe on Jesus and you obey the gospels of Jesus, you are not destroying the commandments. You're not taking up the weight of the commandments, but the Bible says that you are fulfilling the commandments of Moses. Because Jesus didn't come to take off Moses' laws and Moses' commandments. Jesus said that I come to fulfill the prophecy and the, what Moses was writing because everything was about Jesus. In the book of Luke, Luke 24, starting from verse number 44, Luke 24 and 44, the Bible says this is Jesus again. And he said unto them, these are the words which I have spoken unto you. Why I was there with you that all things must be fulfilled, which were really written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then open he the understanding that they might understand the scriptures. See, Jesus said that where I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled. He, he said those things that were really written in the law of Moses and the prophets and, and music and Psalms, it was concerning me. Which means that the law of Moses and the prophecy and, and, and the music that David was writing, the Old Testament, starting from the book from Genesis to Revelation, Jesus was saying it was because of me. Everything that was written in the Bible, it was because of me. But verse number 45 it was one of the most powerful scriptures that you would ever read. Luke 24 and 45, the Bible says, Then Jesus, then he opened the understanding that they might understand the scriptures. See, until Jesus opens our mind and opens who we are so we can understand the scriptures. See, Jesus had to open the understanding. He said, I know you believe Moses, I know you believe David, I know, I know, I know you believe uh, prophet Elijah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel. I, I, know, I know you believe all those great men in the Bible, but what Jesus was saying, that all of those great men that was in the Old Testament was because of me. They was writing about me. They was preparing a way for me to come on the scene. What Jesus was letting his disciples know, that every law and, and everything, it was concerning me. It was a preparation for Jesus to come on the scene. 
It, it, that's why it, that's why in church we before service start we sing and we worship we, we lift our hands and we praise God be, because we are preparing a way for the man of God for the preacher to bring the word of God it, it, it's something that we always done it's something that we always do we prepare a way so when you see people begin to worship in, in, in front of the service and, and they begin to give God glory and they begin to praise Jesus it's because they are preparing the most important part of the service which is the word of God See, the word of God, when it comes, your heart ought to be prepared. That's why Jesus said he, he, he had to open their understanding that they might understand scripture. And can I be honest, unless you are willing to open your mind to the things of God, we will never know who Jesus is. But Jesus himself, he had to open his disciples' understanding. He had to open who they were so they can understand who he was. See, in the Bible, there's a lot of prophecies. There's a lot of promises that was written in the book of, of, of God. See, can I pause and tell you that every promise that's in the word of God, before and in, before end times and before Christ comes back, every promise will have to be fulfilled. That's why Jesus have came, back, came back here, because every promise that's in the word of God has to come to fulfill. The Bible says the nation will, against, will, will arise against nation. And the Bible says that the love of many will become cold. And, and the Bible goes through these great prophecies that nation will fight against nations. And the love of many will become not as love, but it will become cold. And, and those are promises that have to happen. But can I tell you that even good promises will be also be fulfilled. See, in the book of Acts chapter 2, verse number 17, the Bible says, and it shall come to pass in the last day, said God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dream. See, God is getting ready to do something great in these last days. The Bible says that he said in the last days that he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh, which means that when God gets to pour out his spirit, it will not matter what type of color you are. It will not matter what type of background you come from. It will not matter why you, what your family believe in. But when the Bible says that in the last days that God is going to pour out his spirit, and the Bible says that your sons and your daughters will prophesy, and the Bible says that the young man will start seeing visions and the, and the old man will dream dreams because every promise in the word of God will come to pass. Mm -hmm. See, God is getting ready to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. That's why it is so important that when you know Jesus, you invite your family to church and, and you've got it together as a family and you're still praying together because when God gets to pour out his spirit, you don't want to miss out what God is doing. I want to be in, in a place where God can pour out whatever he wants to pour out. I want my heart to be ready when Jesus comes back. I, I want my life to really know who God is. So when he comes back, I'm not a stranger, but I know who he is and I can go and do what God is calling me to do. See, because unless Jesus opens your understanding, yes. you will not really understand what scriptures say. You will not really understand the word of God. But see, when you get to sit down with Jesus, the Bible says that he prepares a table before your enemies. See, what Jesus wants you to do is no matter what happens in your life, Jesus wants you to get to a point where it just becomes so personal that it's just you and him. See, because when it's just you and Jesus, Jesus can start speaking to you and Jesus can start changing your life and, and Jesus can start opening your, your understanding and Jesus can start making you and shaping you and putting you back together for what he has called you to do. Because he had to open his own disciples' understanding. Mm -hmm. See, you will think that his disciples know it all. But the reality is, without Jesus, his disciples would know nothing. See, that's what Jesus, he found it so important. He said, if I don't open their understanding, they're not going to know who I am. And if they don't know who I am, they can't tell nobody else who I am because they don't know who I am. So Jesus, before anything else, he had to open their understanding so they can understand who he is. Amen. See, that's why it's so important for you to get to the heart of God and for you to get to learn who Jesus was. Because like I said from the beginning, everything was made for Jesus and it was because of Jesus. See, Jesus in the Old Testament, it was about Jesus. Another great scripture would be in John 8 and 858. John 8, 58, the Bible said Jesus again. Jesus said, said unto them, very, very, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. So we find in the New Testament, this is the book of John, 
But and Jesus is talking again, and he said before Abraham. Now Abraham, he's in the Old Testament. The Bible says that the Abraham became a great nation, and God blessed him, and everyone that came from Abraham was blessed. But Jesus was saying, but before Abraham was ever existed, before Abraham came out of his mother's womb, before Abraham ever said a word, before Abraham took Isaac to, to the mountain, before he sacrificed Isaac, before Abraham was, I am. Amen. See, and you will be confused Amen. because Jesus is here in the New Testament. Yes. That's what the Bible says, that Jesus had to open their understanding. Because when, you, when he opens your understanding, then you don't start thinking like man, but you start thinking spiritual. Wait, before Abraham was Jesus was before Moses was Jesus was before David was Jesus was Be before Noah Jesus was and then when your understanding becomes open then you get to understanding that Jesus was before Abraham Jesus was before everything so Jesus said to before Abraham was I was I was I am Jesus was claiming that before Abraham, before anyone else, he was. Because Jesus existed before time, and he will exist after time goes away. John 1 and 3, the Bible says that all things were made by him, talking about Jesus Christ. And without him was not anything made that was made. So the Bible says, let us know that all things were made by him. And without him, without Jesus, there was nothing that was made. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that I found it so so interesting and so very good because all things were made by him, which means I was made by Jesus. You was made by Jesus. Everything that we can see, feel, touch was made because of Jesus. Jesus and the Bible says that without him, mm -hmm. there was nothing that was made. So which let me know that if Jesus would have never existed, we would have never been existed. If Jesus would never existed, the word of God would have never been existed. If Jesus was never existed, then, then you and I would not be here today. But the Bible says that all things were made by him. And we saw him was anything made that was made. Which let me know that I was created for him. And I was created to worship him. And I was created to give him my life. And I was created to give God everything that I have because we Without him, I am not here. Let's not get to a point where we think we can do everything on ourselves. Let's never get to a point that we become so big in our mind that we feel like we don't need God. I've come to tell you today that we all need Jesus. It does not matter how old you might be. It does not matter how young you are. We all need a savior. We all need God. We all need Jesus. And without him was not anything made that was made. And I'm getting ready to close, but in the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 1, starting from verse 15, the Bible says, talking about Jesus, he said, who is the image of the invisible God, mm -hmm. the firstborn of every creature? For by him were all things created, that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible or invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Hallelujah. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things exist. And he is the head of the body. He is the head of the church who is the beginning and the end. The firstborn from the dead that in all things that might have the primness. For it pleased he pleased the Father that in him should all the fullness dwell. See, the Bible says that Jesus was the image of the invisible God. See, what you have to understand here this evening, that God is a spirit. The Bible says that those that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. But the Bible let us know that Jesus, when he came on this earth, he was the image, he was the physical image of the invisible God. That's why, that's why when he was crucified, he came back. Thomas couldn't know who Jesus was. And, Th and Jesus looked at Thomas. He, he said, Thomas, look at my arm. It's me. It's me, Jesus, that they have crucified. And from that day, Thomas started knowing who Jesus was because he is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn of every creature. The Bible says that he is before all things and by all things consist. For he is the head of the body and he's the head of the church. Who is the beginning? Jesus was the beginning. And and he is the ending. Jesus is Alpha. He's Omega. He has all power. He has all the authority. Everything was because of Jesus. In verse number 19, it says, For it pleased. The word pleased means that it made the Father good. That, it, that there was no, there was no a, a competition. There was nothing going on. For it pleased the Father that in Jesus to all the fullness dwell. 
which means that he placed God that inside of the man Christ Jesus, that everything will be inside of him, that the power, dominion, and principality, and the glory will be in Jesus. That when Jesus, when they saw Jesus, that the Father, it placed the Father, Amen. that in him should the fullness dwell. And as I get to my closing, I hope I introduce Jesus to you in a way that you can know him. But unless Jesus opens our understanding, we will truly never know who he is. But my prayer here today is that Jesus begins to work with us and Jesus begins to open understanding and we become, we have the spirit of, of wanting to learn more about Jesus and to know who we are. As I get ready to close wherever you are, if you will bow your heads with me and we're gonna pray that God will be with us. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you that you have all the power and you have all the authority. God, I pray that this word of God, as it goes forth, God, God, I pray that somebody will get a revelation of who you are, that somebody will know that everything that they are is because of you, that all things was created for you and everything was made by you. I hope that somebody gets to know that it was because of Jesus that, that we exist today. I hope that somebody gets to realize that, that before the, in the Old Testament was about Jesus and, and the New Testament is about Jesus. God, I pray, Jesus, that you would help us and open understand and help us today to get to know you. I thank you for those that watched online. I thank you for those that are here today. God, I pray that you will continue to be with us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you in Jesus' name.